You may be toying with the idea of entering into a personal contract purchase agreement, or you might already be in one. What you may not know is that entering into one is relatively easy. Getting out of this rabbit hole, well, that's another story. Let's get into it. What is a personal contract purchase agreement or PCP agreement? An easy way to think of a PCP agreement is as if you're renting a house with an option to buy the house. When you rent a house, you receive the house in a certain condition and you're expected to return it to the property owner in that same condition or as close to it as possible. You're expected to put down a deposit before you rent the house. All of what's been said applies to a vehicle on a PCP agreement but, as we mentioned, there's also the option to buy. How does this all fit together? Here's an example. Let's say you found yourself a car that you're super excited about. The cost of the car is £30,000 and you've decided to go down the PCP route. You pass a credit check and you're now getting to the fun part, which is signing the paperwork and paying the deposit. The deposit is usually 10% of the value of the vehicle, so you would need to put down £3,000 in this case, leaving £27,000. This £27,000 is seen as the borrowed amount meaning you'll be paying interest on this amount. You'll see why we've highlighted this point later. The typical term of a loan is three to five years. Obviously, the shorter the term, the higher the payments. Be aware of that. What's next? The balloon payment. You may never have heard of this term before. So to keep it simple, the balloon payment is a large payment that you pay at the end of the agreement in order to keep the vehicle. It's usually much larger than a normal monthly payment. How is it calculated? The finance company will calculate how much they believe the vehicle will be worth at the end of the agreement based on their experience. Let's be honest here. The finance company would never leave themselves short. Therefore, whatever they believe the car will be worth or what's usually known as the guaranteed minimum future value, the GMFV, will ensure they walk away with a healthy profit once the agreement has come to an end. So let's say the finance company decides the vehicle is going to be worth £10,000 at the end of the term you will have three options once the agreement has ended. Option one will be to pay the £10,000 and keep the car. Option two will be to return the car to the dealer with no further finance costs. Emphasis on the finance costs, you'll see why later. Option three will be to use any equity in the car to enter into a new PCP agreement. Cast your mind back to earlier when we mentioned that you need to pay interest on £27,000. Just in case you didn't notice, your borrowed amount is technically £17,000. The £10,000 is a balloon payment. However, you would have paid interest on £27,000. Interesting. 0% interest. There are some dealers who offer 0% interest on the PCP agreement. But, as with most things in life, you can be certain that money will be made elsewhere, for example on the balloon payment. Make sure you pay particular attention if you're considering this type of deal. Next is the damage and the mileage. This is the most important part. This is the part you need to pay the most attention to. Damage. You will be responsible for any damage to the vehicle, meaning that you have to pay for any scratches or bumps, etc. We strongly recommend that you address any damage before you hand the car back, if you're choosing to do that, as you don't want to be paying higher costs than is necessary. You should be covered for any general wear and tear, so do make sure you read your agreement thoroughly. Mileage. Now, this is where so many people get stung, so make sure you're very clear on this. This should be your deal breaker, the mileage. There's usually a set mileage per year that you must stick to. If you go over the amount, you'll be subject to an excess mileage charge. I think it's time for a TRDG example so you can understand how great the impact can be. Say your mileage allowance is 10,000 miles per year on a three year contract. You end up doing 15,000 miles per year or 45,000 miles over the three years. This means you have gone over your agreed allowance by 15,000 miles. Your agreement states that you have to pay 50 pence per mile plus VAT on any excess mileage. That leaves you with a bill of 7,500 pounds plus VAT to pay should you wish to return the car. The small print in these deals is everything. The trap. It's not unusual for someone entering a PCP agreement to feel trapped in the agreement. This is because finding the money for the balloon payment in the end isn't so easy. 
Giving back the car means that the person may no longer have access to a vehicle. Therefore, the third option, use any equity in the car to enter into a new PCB agreement, becomes the most likely choice. Usually the balloon payment is slightly below the market value of the car at the time the new agreement has ended, meaning the vehicle may have some equity in it. The guaranteed minimum future value, the GMFV in our example, is £10,000. And let's say the actual market value at the end of the agreement is £12,500. £2,500 can be used as a deposit for a new car in a new PCP agreement. £12,500 minus £10,000 equals £2,500. And so the cycle continues. Early exit. You do have the right under the Consumer Credit Act to return the car as long as you've made half of the agreement's payments. Remember though, that you may still be liable for any damage or excess mileage. Now it's time for the Real Debt Guy's final thoughts. Enter into any agreement should not be taken lightly and a personal contract purchase agreement is one that highlights this point. We get it. It's nice to have a new car without worrying about it breaking down or having to deal with lots of maintenance costs, but that golden carrot may end up having a rotten core. We always recommend that you try and buy a car outright to ensure peace of mind. Your car is your independence and if you lose it, you may find yourself isolated. Remember, with a PCP agreement you don't actually own the car. Until you pay the balloon payment, the finance company owns it. So if you don't make the payments, the car will be taken from you. We don't ever recommend borrowing, but you may be better off using an unsecured personal loan to buy the vehicle. If something goes wrong, the vehicle is not at immediate risk. Take a look at our debt first aid kit, which is on our site www.therealdebtguy.com to understand what your options are if things go wrong. If something has already gone wrong with your car finance, we got you. Read our article again on our website www.therealdebtguy.com, how to handle the remaining car finance after repossession. This will help you understand and tackle your situation.